Okay, test 28, rookie. Okay, another recording. And I think we're going to go to... Let me turn my mic a little bit. Uh, I just did a mission with this uh, last craft. I like it so much. I'm going to fly it again. Uh, the only difference is I have a different lander. So we'll go ahead and get this thing going. Get my flight computer ready to go. I'm going to go 200 kilometer orbit. I'm going to stop this at stage 6. Up. These are solids, of course they're going to be full all the time. And this with the newest version 1.51. Had a little bit of problems getting this game to work with all the mods I have in it. So that's kind of a you know what to be expected if you're running a lot of mods. Every time you update the game, I mean unless you're updating it to a pristine copy with no mods in it. But I don't do that. I mean, because I don't, I don't even keep a pristine copy, because I don't play it that way. I play with mods. <clears throat> I have about 50 mods installed, and I mostly do it for the extra function I get, and for mainly the parts. Like a lot of the parts I have on this craft right here, I wouldn't be able to fly in the stock game. But anyway, I did have some problems when I uh, updated well, first to 1.5 and then to 1.51. And everything loaded okay. But when I went to put, in fact, I used the same spacecraft right here. When I went to put this craft in the VAB, it was fine. But as soon as I put it on the launch pad, oh man, all hell broke loose turned into a noodle craft. I mean, this thing was wobbling like crazy. All the parts were wobbling. And they eventually separated themselves and self-destructed right there in the launch pad. Hell, even the nose cones I had on the boosters popped off. The weirdest damn thing. And I was... That's the first time I've had that much of a calamity. You know, with mods and, and uh, installing to the latest version. Usually it's gone smoother than that. 
And I thought I was in big trouble. I said, oh man, I'm just totally screwed. I'm not even going to be able to play this version. And um, so I started going on some forums and looking at my mods, and it was uh, turned out it was the Kerbal uh, Reinforcement, Joint Reinforcement mod. Uh, went kind of haywire and it was like the game couldn't make sense out of what was attached so it was like uh, you know like I said since I put any craft no matter which one I chose it would do that the craft just wouldn't hold together before I could even launch it and uh, somebody made a little change. It was a, a user that did it, not the mod makers. It, because that mod is real small. It's just basically a dill. And he made a change to it. And it was like an unofficial. And I'll be damned if I put that thing in there and everything was fine again. It beats me if I know what the hell that was all about. There's my different lander. I have a lander similar to this that I built. This one's a little tiny bit different. It's got a little bit different capsule on it. Different tanks. And you can see I have my my trusty hollow limb legs from the Fasimod. My favorite all-time legs. And mainly because of course I like the looks, but mainly because they're the only legs that don't give me a bounce landing. Orbit achieved, 200 kilometers. This is a Apollo capsule, but this is from the Blue Dog mod. So this is the one I'm using for this mission, and I believe the tanks, I can't remember if this is from the tanks plus mod, I can't even remember now.
which holds five Kerbals. So there's actually two different capsules in in the Blue Dog mod. One one capsule uh, holds three, and this capsule holds five. Okay, we're going to head on over to Minmus.
Okay, let's see how close we came. Okay, we're gonna have to do a correction burn. end up having to do this with Minmus. With the moon, I'll get an encounter, an encounter point right off the bat. But I don't on Minmus. And I'm a rookie because this is as far as I've been. I still haven't figured out how to get to Dooney yet. I mean, I, I just, I totally suck at a lot of parts in this game still. But I still haven't figured out how to do that. Okay, let's take a look again. Okay. I gotta do something first before I do this. Alright, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. I want it.
There's a mothership. You can see it's going to be working overtime to keep that thing in station. And you can kind of see there's three solar panels kind of through the balance a little bit because you can see it's not quite holding like it's fighting those three solar panels. Maybe if I were to put, even though those three are symmetrical. Uh, maybe if I would have put four, you know, it has to do with the balance of the rest of the ship, you know, where the thrusters are, but you can see I don't quite have that balanced. It shouldn't be doing that. It should just be sitting there. By the time I get back, that thing is going to use a lot of uh, RCS, th a lot of mono propellant for the RCS thrusters. Luckily, I got huge ass tanks on there, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, let's see where we're going to go with this guy.
That's where I want to go, right there. I use the same craft wherever I go. It doesn't. I don't need to have a craft this big for Minmus. <coughs> Excuse me. With the low gravity on Minmus, it doesn't take very much power to get there. This is way overkill. It's okay for the moon. But I like this craft. I just like the way it looks. Now, bouncy legs are even more apparent on Minmus than they are the moon. Because of Minmus, super low gravity, things have a tendency to not want to stay planted. 
So if you had bounce issues with the landing legs on the moon, you're going to have them twice as bad here. But luckily, these legs um, aren't going to have that problem. Why well, I picked them. Looks like we're going to land pretty close. That's what you call a good landing. Damn, I love these legs. I guess I love these legs because they're the only ones that land like this. And that's one of the pet peeves. If you watch any of my other videos, you heard me rant about this bullshit. And every one of them just about. Because none of the other legs will land like that. That landing right there was a typical landing the way a landing should be. But for some reason, Squad wants to throw these legs in to give you this pogo stick landing, this retract, bounce, retract, bounce. If I had the other legs on there, this thing would still be bouncing right now. And it'd just be up and down, up and down, up and down. This just looks totally ridiculous. I mean, you can obviously see. I've chose these legs before. I still use the stock legs. Okay, and there's... Actually, these craft... These three craft look similar, but they're all different. Even though they, I'm using the same legs on all three, but you can see this one is a little different than this one. Actually, maybe this might be the same one as this one, but it's a little different size, it looks like. And that one is a totally different tank. But when I flew both of these, they were with different uh, different landers. Because I do try to mix it up. And this time I brought five guys. You know what I mean about the gravity? Like, whoa. I mean, it's like marshmallow. Okay, in the base. This is one of my favorite bases. I like this guy. And I actually I actually copied this base. Kinda. 
from a forum that I was on where a guy actually made this um, the old-fashioned way. He actually flew the parts up and assembled it here. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't... I liked his the shape of his station, but I wanted to be able to just assemble it in uh, the space plane hangar and use HyperEdit to bring it up here. So that's what I did. And this isn't exact to his, but it's it's the basic shape of his. I liked I liked it so well. I actually uh, took a screenshot of it uh, on the forum and printed it. And then when I went to the space plane hangar, I had that drawing right next to me, and I said, I'm going to try to, because I just liked it. I just liked the shape of it. You can see he uh, angled these, both of these, angled this back this way. His looks, this looks quite a bit different, actually, than his, but it's the basic, it's the basic shape. So I took that basic shape. Because I've been doing stuff like a cross, or a square, or maybe one that went like this, and like this, something like that. And this one was, when I saw this, I said, I like it. I'm going to, because it was different, uh, different shape than the other ones I had been making. So that's a, that's the neat thing about, about bases, you know, you can... And the, I mean, the sky's the limit on what you can do. So I took a basic uh, design that I liked, and then I made it mine. And, uh, you know, I made some changes to it. Uh, so you could tell the shape is similar, but uh, then all the rest of the stuff, I just sort of tweaked it how I liked it. You know, the other one had this, which I really liked. Now, I like to look at this as my big water tank. I have another base up here that I have like five of these guys on there. I call it my sphere base. But I wanted to do this one. And then, like I said, I use HyperEdit to bring this up here. You build you build it complete in the space playing hangar, just how you want it with all your parts. Let's take a look inside. Only the modules uh, that have a Kerbal in them are going to show when you do this. And there's one of my ports. You can see the base of one of my spacecraft over there. I'm starting up my my little neighborhood here. This base hasn't been up here very long. I have about uh, six or seven on Minmus. I probably have fifteen on the moon. All different from each other. So when I visit them, I can have a little different experience with each one. And you know, there's some of my stations they'll have like. Get eight or nine craft around it on previous times that I've flown to it. See this guy I just left here. I'm gonna just go ahead and leave him. I came up with five. I'm gonna go back with four. I could do various things. I could put them all in here if I wanted to. I have plenty of room. You can see how many I have in here now. But I have. I have probably enough in there for three times that many. So over time, I'll probably have it filled up. Yeah, 
know, these are my greenhouses. These are just domes. I think I'm going to redo this one a little bit. See, I was in here where we were looking out. Actually, I think I was in this one. And see, I have one, two, three, four. See where I could go in there and look out. I think I'm going to make another change to this and maybe put one of these here. Because I can look out that way, this way, that way. So I probably need to put one here and maybe one over here too so I can, when I go in I can have views going out different ways, especially when I have different spacecraft up here where I can go into one of these and get a view wherever I'm at. It's pretty bright down there. Let's see. Actually, those. I'm going to turn it back on because when I take off the one down here, I won't have the, as much lights in it. Okay, let's go ahead and get this ready. Thank you. 
There she is, that's where I'm going. See, I cut my thrust way down, like 34% or so. If I would lifted it at 100, I think we took off like a missile. There's my separator that I had between the two craft. I'm going to have to... That thing's going to just be permanently orbiting the moon. Or Minmus, rather. So when I finish this mission, I'll have to go back into the tracking station and manually take that out. So listen, I just want to leave it there. But I don't like to do that because I fly a lot of missions, so if I left them all there, this you know, that's space junk. I'd have way more stuff that the game had to track. So if I don't want it up there, I just as soon get rid of it. So the game doesn't have to track as many things. And I don't, when you go to the station, you're going to see that in orbit. And I don't want to see all that stuff because it, it, it adds up. You know, after you fly 50 missions, man, you, you just have junk all over the place. I leave everything that I land. I could go delete that stuff too, but I don't want to delete that because when I go back and land again on another mission, I want to see those craft. If I fly by one or go to a base that I've been to, you know, a few times, I want to see all those previous craft there. That's one of the reasons why I fly two-stage landers. Because I could just choose to fly a one-stage, but that's not as much fun for me because then when I take off I have no record of me being there so if I go there again later on uh, you're not gonna see anything there so I just would rather see a uh, use two stage and see all my my descent stages that I left behind just like if you went to the moon right now you'd see all the descent stages of all the Apollo craft and all of the unmanned craft that are there too. Man, I'm actually pretty close to this one. Some missions, the flight computer will take me 
pretty close to right up to it and then other times the orbits don't match so even though it looks like this uh, the planes aren't right the orbits aren't right so I'll end up being you know having to orbit a few times to line up we'll see what this one does just flew right by me. One thing I noticed too about 1.51, I started playing this game in 1.31. I haven't played this game terribly a long time, but uh, you know, it's been a little while, a year or so. And it seems like to me that this version here, 1.51, is the slowest of all of them. I don't know what they did and I don't know if it's because of all my mods but I see other people that don't even have mods that are saying the same thing if this game is just running slower I don't know why that is you know they made you know they make various changes in each version but this one um, I keep up with the latest version because I always want to see what's going on, you know, see what changes. I have 1.43 that I call my go-to game. It's the one that I play. It's the one that I just like everything about it. Runs significantly better than this version does. And I still have 1.31 also. I still play it from time to time. Because there's some things I really like about it. Uh, the downside is I can't play. Uh, I can't build these craft like this craft that I had here. I can't. I couldn't build it in 1.3 when I just don't have the parts because the mods aren't compatible. Uh, some of them, and it's just uh, not letting me build the same craft. And a lot of them has to do with uh, the Making History mod uh, DLC that I have and it also has parts in it so yeah I'm getting right to this one didn't have to do any orbits kept it in sight the whole way that's not always the case I like it when it's like this oh but anyway um, so I play those three versions 
And like I said, this one is the slowest of all of them. The gameplay itself is just kind of a little bit slower. I don't have a uh, frames per second meter. I'm just going by feel. Uh, this one just feels like it's a few frames per second slower. And where I really notice the difference is in like going to the map. It just before 1.43, I hit the map button. I'm at the map. This one you hit, you hit it, and it takes a couple seconds. And that changes the game, you know, because you're doing that quite a bit throughout the game. So you're you have to go through that pause every time. Sometimes it's three seconds. And then where the biggest one is just loads. But it has to load a game. Um, go to the tracking station after you finish the game. Uh, you know, just d different stuff like that. The load times are probably... Man. I haven't put a stopwatch on them. But for me, they feel like they're twice as long. The load times are twice as long as 1.43. So they have definitely uh, made some changes. Game just feels this feels a little sluggish to me compared to the 1.43. Yeah, stressors are still firing. <laughs> still firing just to hold station on that thing. Okay, we're holding station.
See, the way I have this, something's not in balance. See, I have, you know, I have the four RCS thrusters on both ends, and they're symmetrical. And then I placed these, you know, there's four of these symmetrical, there's only three solar panels. I think three looks cool, and I hadn't had three before. The last one I had, I think I had either two or four. Looks good. You know, I, I like to mix it up. Looks good if there would just would have been two, that would look cool. If there would have been four, that would have looked cool. And having three looks cool. The three seems to be the one that's the out of balance. Now it wants to just rock back and forth. So if this thing just stayed in orbit, Luckily, I got these big old ass uh, mono tanks on here, so I have plenty. But eventually, I'd run out. I would just, I would just have this thing just keep stationed indefinitely. What I would do is, I would just turn the thrusters off. I'd leave the art. I would leave the uh, SAS on and turn the thrusters off. See, there's no pod on here. So there's no reaction wheel in here. See, they changed the RCS thruster sounds a little bit more in this version. They, they originally switched them on 1.44, 1.45 that I didn't like. These, I don't mind too much. Got a little bit different sound. The only thing I still don't like about this compared to before 1.44 is they also gave the sound that you're hearing right now they put the same sound on like the separatrons so that's the part I don't like I don't mind this sound here for RCS thrusters these are basically gas thrusters that are using mono propellant this this sound okay right here is okay but separatrons is it's out of place when you have boosters separating from launches and you hear that sound when the boosters are separating don't sound right the boosters should have rocket motor sounds but they changed it to the RCS thruster sound so I kinda when I have boosters big old boosters and they're separating on the way to orbit and I, then I hear this sound as they're separating it's just all wrong to me we're, we're in 1.43 when they separated it sounded like a rocket separating you know like boosters um, well it just sounded like boosters like a nice explosive low rumble rocket sound rather than this more airy sound of the RCS thruster so I like the sound of the RCS thrusters, but I didn't like that they're using the same sound for the separatrons, or basically any any motor that you're using for separations. Different mods have their own versions of the separatron, but they all have that same sound. Oh, 
Okay, we docked. It's time to get out of here. So we want to do a burn that's going to take us out of Minmus orbit and put us back on a trajectory to Earth. Okay, you can see our direction of orbit. <coughs> Excuse me. So the craft will orientate itself to push in the direction that it's traveling in prograde to speed it up the brake fee of gravity. If you had it firing, so you're going to see it turn around to prograde. If it was firing retrograde, that would be if you were going to land it on Minmus, which we did at the beginning, where you're firing your rockets in opposite direction of travel, slow you down, so you can drop out of orbit, so you can deorbit. So now we're going to break free of the orbit to go back on a trans-Earth trajectory. Okay, you can see how we were back on a, we're going to coast all the way to Earth now and gain speed. So you can see how out of whack my plane is. So first thing we're going to do is correct that. See, when I clicked it, see how long it took for a register? If I would have, on the other version, that was instant. Just like the map, if you listen, you probably heard my keystroke and how long it took before the map, before I entered the map. Now you can see my new plane a lot better. Now I have a pretty good periapsis area. That's about right where I want to be. Let's get a little bit closer. See, we're going to go through. That's the moon right there. Shows you how far out we were.
And the plane's still out quite a bit, isn't it? Change this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and do that. The thing I, I always like to come back into an Earth's orbit rather than just come back in the free return would have got me home. Uh, but I had no control over where I was going to land. So if you had the fuel, which I do, you can see I had plenty. I mean, I actually had more fuel left in doing this same mission uh, going to the moon. And you can see the size of this craft. It held a lot of fuel. And that was done intentional so I would be able to do this. I could have ran this mission a lot leaner. If I wanted to just have enough fuel for the free return. And then just come back in and re-enter wherever that was going to be. That would be fine. But I, I want to play this way. Adds a little bit of time to the game. Uh, a little bit more precision and it gives me a little more control over where I land so I build, I build that in uh, to the way I like to fly my missions Okay, we're getting ready to do one more burn to bring us home. See, we're gonna, we're gonna land.
I have my own way I like to do this. I used like half mech jeb and half manual. You know, if you don't have an atmosphere like the moon or Minmus, uh, mech jeb uh, landing guidance is 10 point dead on. Like within, I mean, you can literally, well, you saw where I landed, right and we're next to my base. You can literally land that close. With with uh, coming back to uh, Kerbin, with the atmosphere, uh, it's not nearly as accurate. So, you're going to see I'm going to, Okay, I'll cut it off right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and save it again. Double check. And this is where you have to do a little guessing. Um, you can see my burn. This is pretty close to landing right there, even though it's showing over here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a real quick well right there. I think that'll work. If I burned again where this point was here, I'd end up landing about here. So you got to kind of you know, figure that out and kind of know where that point is when you want to do a landing like, you know, I don't want to miss this. I don't want to land right here or right here. That's why I picked here. I want to land on land. So let's go ahead and see how good we did. I think this is the first video I've made where I've done the whole mission without vaping. I've been vaping a couple of years and I recently just gave it up. So now I'm vape free. It started to bug me a little bit. I vape all day long, taking these huge hits. And by half a day or at the end of the day, my lungs would start hurting. And I started thinking, you know what, dude? This isn't working out too well for you. Shouldn't be, you know, having to go through that to vape. So I just says, fuck it. And I had about, I make my own juice, and I had about, I've been making my own juice for a long time. And I just knew the way I am. Let me do this here for a second. Okay, there's my two stages that are jettisoned, bringing my capsule home. And anyway, I knew how I am, that if I didn't get rid of this shit, I would keep doing it. Even though I know the way it's been affecting me and I shouldn't be doing it, I knew I, I, knew I would keep doing it. So I literally went through a ritual and said, you know what, when I cross the bridge, uh, go from one cliff to the next with, with my ladder, 
when I get to the other end, I need to throw the ladder away. Because I know I will go back and start doing it again. So that's what I did. I literally took my shit, dumped all my juice, and I didn't just throw it away. I dumped it because I knew if I just threw it in the trash can, the next day I'd probably go back and get it. And I had probably like six different mods, tanks and RDAs and shit that I vape on. And I knew that I literally had to take each one of them apart and destroy them and throw them in the trash can. Because I knew if I didn't do that, you know, I, I knew the next day, I just knew it. Even though I'd be steadfast against vaping, I knew, oh, I'm going to miss this. I knew that I would probably go dumpster diving back in my trash can the next day and grab all that shit, put it all back together again, and vape again. So I, I said, you know what, I have to I have to tear this shit up so if, if I want to go get it tomorrow, I still won't be able to vape. Because <laughs> the shit would be all broken up. That's what I did. So when I caught myself, you know, a creature of habit, I caught myself a bunch of times through this video getting ready to reach for the vape because it's just habit even though I haven't been enjoying it for a while now it's like I'll enjoy one hit and the next hit it's just <clears throat> kind of does a number on me and I said you know what okay let's get ready to, to, to deploy my boom okay I missed that you know last two or three times I've done this mission I haven't heard the booms that's kind of the way it is with this game and this game throws some stuff in there kind of like at a random thing you fly the exact same mission and it'll behave a little bit differently each time like it's it's kind of like almost does it on purpose but like this time this time I heard the detonations last couple of times I haven't heard them at all they just winked out so you know if they didn't make it to the ground and detonated burned up I should have been able to still hear it you know there's sometimes I will hear it and sometimes I won't hear it Safe and sound. One other little thing I did here. This heat shield is from the Apollo command module from the FASA mod. This is the command module from the Blue Dog mod, the Apollo. It had its own heat shield. And like every other time I would fly it, because I always like to land on land, sometimes it would explode. This heat shield would hit the ground and explode, even though it wouldn't destroy the craft, wouldn't destroy the Kerbals, but I didn't like that. I didn't like the little explosion at the end. So I went into the config, or actually I went into the game and looked at the, uh, I forgot what it's called, the, the detonation impact or the something, something impact. I forgot what the, what's it, what it's called. But right clicking on the part, you can see it. And this Apollo NASA heat shield had a, a higher impact tolerance. I think that's what it was. So, so far I put this one on. And I haven't, it hasn't exploded. The heat, sh uh, heat shield hasn't exploded on impact. So, little tidbit that don't mean shit. Okay, later, dudes.